Hello, I'm Ilash Ravinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them and tell you everything you need to know. Tonight, let's talk about Hungary's latest move in the realm of what could possibly go wrong. It seems that Hungary has decided to ease visa restrictions for Russian tourists. And unsurprisingly, this has raised more than a few eyebrows across Europe. The European People's Party's Manfred Weber has sounded the alarm in a rather strongly worded letter published by the Financial Times. He's not sending holiday greetings, he's warning that this could open the door, quite literally, to infiltration from Russian intelligence. Now, imagine this. While the rest of Europe is tightening screws and bolstering firewalls against potential security threats, Hungary is rolling out the welcome mat, saying, come on in, no security checks needed. It's like watching someone installing a high-level, state-of-the-art security system in their house, but at the same time leaving the back door wide open. Hungary's government says that many of these visitors will be building a nuclear power plant using Russian technology. Because when I think of nuclear safety, the first thing that comes to mind is definitely minimal supervision. Weber, however, isn't buying it. He's calling this new visa system doubtful and a perfect recipe for creating significant gaps for espionage activity. It's almost as if Hungary is hosting a spy convention and everyone's invited. Now, Weber's fear is that this policy not only allows Russians to slip into Hungary with ease, but also gives them a backdoor into the Schengen zone. Yes, the Schengen zone, where once you're in, you're in. It's like getting a backstage pass to Europe, the continent, not the band, but instead of a really good gig and moshing to the final countdown, you might be attending a buffet of classified information. And so, Weber has penned a desperate plea to the EU leaders to tighten up, crack down and prevent Hungary from turning the Schengen zone into an espionage free-for-all. It's as if Europe needed another reason to have a headache and Hungary just volunteered to be the cause. So hats off to Hungary for punching enough holes in national security to make it look like Swiss cheese. I'm guessing Manfred Weber is now wondering if there is enough painkillers on the European market to help lawmakers in Brussels cure this latest political migraine. Then again, what did they expect from a leader who recently blamed the US for Nord Stream 2 blast, said Russia was not really autocratic, spoiler alert, yes it is, and accused Poland, of all places, of being hypercritical in its dealings with Russia. Because according to Orban, to say and do all these things, and then throw wide the gates to potential Russian sabotage and interference operation is not hypocrisy at all. Now, Let's take a stroll through the opulent halls of Russian military grandeur, where the champagne flows freely and corruption is apparently part of the catering service. Ah yes, while well, Comrade Tsar, aka Vladimir Putin, saunters around with a glass of bubbly mingling with ship commanders in St. Petersburg, back at the ranch, or should I say the defense ministry, things are getting a bit messy. Enter Dmitry Bulgakov, former deputy defense minister, who has been arrested not for stealing hearts at the officer's ball, but for taking kickbacks on the supply of sub-bar military rations. That's right, while Putin raises a toast to military might, his officers were supposedly raising their cholesterol with low-quality snacks that wouldn't pass muster at a poorly catered office party. Unless, of course, the troops wanted instant indigestion as an excuse to get away from the trenches, in which case this stuff would surely come in handy. The narrative thickens with the delightful detail that Bulgakov wasn't just pocketing cash on the side. He was actively ensuring that the Grzyzinski Food Combine won bids to supply these delectable military munchies. The investigation claims that while the cost of these rations was inflated, their nutritional value and quality were deflated, swapping beef for cheaper substitutes like pork or poultry, a culinary bait and switch that would make even a fast food chain blush. And as if that wasn't enough, Bulgakov's culinary conspiracy was apparently a family affair. 
His daughter, through her company, allegedly netted a tidy sum of 200 million rubles by supplying substandard sustenance to the troops from 2008 to 2018. Nothing like keeping it all in the family, right? So, here we are, witnessing the Russian military-industrial complex in all its glory, where the only thing more robust than the weapons is the nepotism and the corruption. Here is to you, Russian Defense Ministry, because when you aim to impress, you literally know how to dish it out, pun intended. Now, let's take a quick dip into the refreshing waters of honesty and unexpectedly splashing out from Russia's political pool. It seems that Yevgeny Fedorov, a state Duma deputy from United Russia, Putin's party, has decided to break the mold by making a startling admission. Yes, a Russian politician admitting a fault. Mark your calendars, this is rarer than a solar eclipse. Fedorov has publicly acknowledged what many might call a military oopsie. Actually, let's call it what it is, a debacle. He admitted, in a burst of startling clarity, that the Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Federation is essentially no more. It's gone, he exclaimed. That's right, just like your socks that disappear in the laundry, only slightly more expensive and, you know, militarily significant. And he didn't stop there. Fyodorov reminisced about how the Russian forces who once harbored grand dreams of landing in Odessa were instead left without even a sliver of Snake Island, Kherson, and notably their own ships in the Black Sea. It seems the fleet had sailed, quite literally, into the annals of military mishaps, except for the few warships that got promoted to submarine duty. And here is the kicker. Fyodorov declared, and I quote, the enemy is stronger than us. That's not a phrase you often hear from a government known for its Russia strong bravado. He even threw in a little disclaimer just in case, not in the nuclear sphere, because you've got to keep some of that pride intact, right? I think the fleet will always shoot them, because the ships are flying from them, they need to shoot them. Of course, the PVO fleet will work on the ships, but the fleet of the Russian fleet, оперативного э, механизма на Черном море нету, не, не физически нету, а нету с точки зрения его реального боевого присутствия. Я думаю, это факт. Ну, вспомните, как, как с чего все начиналось. Остров Змеиный, помните, который героически наши морские пехотинцы взяли? Где это все? Где это э, так называемый контроль за сделкой, э, продовольственной сделкой, когда все суда Украины досматривались, в том числе с помощью нашего флота? Где? Сейчас украинский торговый флот возит это оружие в любых количествах, сколько хочет. Еще год назад этого не было. But let's give credit where credit is due. It's refreshing to see such candor, even if it's as startling as finding a bear in your bathroom. Fyodorov's outburst is like accidentally tuning into an alternate reality where Russian officials admit that perhaps not everything is going according to plan. NATO cannot be defeated, he said. Not with that attitude, certainly. So, let's all take a moment to appreciate this rare gem of truth from the State Duma. It's like spotting a unicorn in the wild, or a working T-14 Armata tank out in the open. You might not see it again, so cherish it while you can. And to Mr. Fedorov, thank you for your honesty. It is a brave look for you, it really brings out your eyes. Don't accept tea party invites and limit the time you spend inside buildings to ground floor only, meaning, you know, no windows. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.